Hi, everyone. Jeff Hello. Cranford and Oli back here for this our... This is it. This is it, Oli. Last one. Last one. Four out of four. Today, we're going to talk about the notion of a judge. Mm -hmm. We talked about an advocate. We talked about the victim. Today, we're going to talk about Jesus and God as judges. Mm -hmm. uh, I've often heard it said that the rules of golf can be your friend, but they can also... They can also be your judge. Right. Uh, you ever have any situations where sometimes they were your friend and other times they were your judge? Yeah, there's no question about it. I mean, uh, I remember one time in particular, uh, I was playing around and we had gotten to a water hazard. And uh, I thought my ball wasn't sure. I thought it had crossed, but then said, no, it must have gone in the water. Played my shot, got to the other side, and a rules official came out. And, I, and then found my ball on the other side. And because I hadn't yet got to my ball, this rules official, rightly or wrongly, says, look, here are the rules. He got the rule book open. He says, you can forego your shot that you've played from the hazard and play your original ball because you hadn't yet arrived to your ball and you, and before you played your ball. And I thought you'd had to declare or something like that. Anyway, I still don't completely understand it. But in that case, he was the judge. He was the rules official. And it really was uh, very much to my benefit. It was very much to my benefit. So I like the whole concept of, of judge and juror, which is, you know, a rules official in a golf tournament. Now, one thing I will say, too, there are a lot of characteristics that we get that are obviously similar between God the Father from a judicial language, God the Father, and even Jesus, and a judge. I explain a little bit about what a judge is. It's funny you should say that because we always, those of us who were trial lawyers, we always had the notion, we always tried to avoid the judge and there were a lot of them out there who thought they were God. <laughs> we didn't want to be, we didn't want to be in their courtroom because we could get a little more leeway in terms of doing what it was we wanted to do. You say that because you're not practicing anymore, isn't it, that right? <laughs> and, but I do have a lot of friends who are judges and, and none of them believe that they were God, but they'll know who I'm talking about. Uh, Judges are, in a way, uh, in, in terms of, like God, in their courtroom, they control it. They don't let anybody else mess around with it. They have their rules. They tell us when to sit, when to stand up. Uh, on, by the same token, though, uh, judges are fair. Mm -hmm. The good judges, the ones we wanted to be in front of, were fair. And even though there were rules and laws that people had to follow and a judge had to apply, Judges had some discretion, and I'd like to, kind of my construct of my God, he has some discretion, and he can show mercy when the rule may be X, and I'm thinking it's Y, there may be some discretion that my God can offer me and some mercy, because I, I need mercy every day. Yeah. I don't want that rule hammered on me all the time. So there are some parallels between between a judge that I used to practice in front of uh, and God as a judge. But, but tell us, let's come back to Scripture. Though. Tell us about what you find in Scripture that talks about this notion of Jesus or God as a judge. Right. You know, first of all, I think of Paul in his letter to the Romans. He says, Behold, both the kindness and the severity of God. And I think in a culture, we tend to say sometimes we miss it again. We fall off on one side of the horse or the other. Uh, oh, the man upstairs. Oh, and we just kind of take it flippantly. Oh, well, you know, maybe you'll help me win the back nine today. And we really, again, don't realize who we're dealing with in his holiness. In fact, Paul, again, in his letter to the, the believing Jewish community in Hebrews chapter 10, in verse 29, says, How much severe punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted the spirit of grace. And it goes on and just talks about who wants to fall into the hands of a, of a, of a living God. I mean, and so there's power there. And then in Hebrews chapter 12, we get a, this kind of the, the veil of heaven is pulled back and they see, they see the blood there and myriads of angels. And then the Bible says, it says, and the what? The spirit of righteous men made perfect in right which is God's mercy and yet it also says and God the judge of all now what's fascinating you say well God the Father then is the picture of judgment but then if you go to John chapter 5 Jesus said uh, God's the judge but he's given all judge to all judgment to me to honor that he might honor the son 
But then a little bit later, Jesus says, well, wait a minute. Uh, it's not even me who's going to judge in the end. It is my word who is going to be your judge at the end. So you see, yes, God's judge, and he's severe, and who wants to fall in the hands of, a, of this incredibly powerful creator of all things who hates sin and loves goodness and, and, and righteousness? How can these coexist? Well, the connection, again, as we saw last week, is that mediation of Jesus, who then becomes the judge and says, well, I'm going to give it all to you in the beginning. Here's my word. Here's the story of the gospel. And if you'll believe into me, which is believe into my words, you'll never face judgment. In fact, that's what Paul tells the Thessalonians, the church of Thessalonica, at Thessalonians. He says, he says, look, we are not under the wrath of God. We're not going to come under the wrath of God anymore, which is a beautiful thing, a beautiful thing. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't be afraid of God as our judge or Jesus as our judge. We we always fear God in the sense that we got to recognize we have to recognize who we're dealing with. But I am not afraid of judgment anymore because I put my full faith and confidence in in that mediator, in that intercessor, in that in that advocate, which was Jesus who went to the cross two thousand years ago, to make sure that my record was made clean. What a great story. What a great story. A lot of judicial language, isn't there, in the Bible? Oh. Justification we didn't even get to. Yeah. And then, yeah. But it's powerful. It's a powerful picture. Very so powerful. I just want to thank you on behalf of Links, first of all, for your service to this ministry. And all many of you who will be watching this are in, in debt to our national board and many others who support the ongoing operations of Links. So, Oli, thank you for that. Thank you for being with me for, uh, for these four weeks. And uh, we sure look forward to having you again in the future. My pleasure. All right. We love you guys. Have a great day. See ya.